5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and go! Do you play with Legos? Or maybe you once did? Well, this isn't play. This is serious. Looking at what they've become in the hands of these young engineers, it doesn't take long to forget what you know about Legos. They've made them into real, swimming, diving, object-grabbing, remote-controlled submarines. I played with Legos when I was a kid, but I can't remember ever talking about things like axial sensors, force feedback, or NXTs. Those are the brick-like brains of Lego Mindstorm's robotic devices. It's an NXT, like those are the controllers, the touch sensors, and it's a rotation sensor. Abigail and her team are from Lincoln Park Middle School in New Jersey. They join more than 200 other young people from schools around the region here at the Stevens Institute of Technology, a university that specializes in ocean engineering and science. Here, overlooking the Hudson River in Hoboken, the students pit their so-called boat bots against one another in the Build IT Challenge. Build IT is funded by a grant of $1.2 million from the National Science Foundation. The Motorola Foundation provides additional support. The idea is to get kids' hands on the engineering. And hopefully they'll hang on. The students compete for points in categories like speed, innovative design, and the number of balls they can pluck from the bottom of the pool and place in pans sorted by size. Mirroring the way engineering is done in the adult world, the student bot builders become specialists and divide the work among the team. I move the wires in the pool. I'm a builder. <laughs> I was also a strategizer, which is pretty much telling them what obstacles to go for, what points to range, buckets to go in, and things to move around. You got it. Good job. The students are hopefully having fun with what they're doing. They're learning a little bit about what the engineering design cycle is. How do they design, redesign, how do they test? Uh, they're also learning a little bit about science. It's the issues of buoyancy, stability, flow, three-dimensional movement, uh, inertia. The crux of the mission is to program the NXT control boxes. Together with the motors and propellers, they're what set these projects apart from the Lego cowboy forts I built when I was a kid. And I never had to design my cowboy forts to compete. They never had to do what a Mars rover does or what a remote piloted undersea vehicle does. So this year we brought in the Mindstorms uh, kit, which is the Lego robotics kit. It comes with what's called the NXT module, which is sort of a little mini computer. The kids can program that using icon-based software, where they don't type instructions, they actually pull icons for what the robot should do, like turn this motor on, uh, you know, move this data over to here so that this robot can do this with this motor, read this sensor, um, and so they kind of map out a program. It's a continuous loop that goes on forever, and it works by these different switches which are programmed into our NXT. When they are activated on the switchboard, then they will send commands to the motors to make motor A go forwards or B go forwards. We really hope it's just a beginning point for the students and hopefully dispel the idea that either an engineer is somebody who drives a train or an engineer is somebody who works behind a desk in a cubicle and just sits pushing paper all day. was certainly good for the Lincoln Park Middle School team. They won. And for LiveScience.com, I'm Rob Goodyear.